welcome back and uh, we have been uh, studying how we have to learn about the balanced diet and how we have to plan a meal taking into consideration so many factors and how we feed our family and the people uh, in a very good manner so that they keep healthy and fit. After uh, knowing all this, we should also know what is the food sanitation and hygiene, how you prepare the food in a manner which it is uh, hygienically prepared. So, food sanitation means it implies cleanliness, preparing, storing and serving of food and water. So, this is the most essential part of the food preparation. You see how neatly they are stacked and uh, he is cleaning every place after preparation and the vegetables also are very nicely prepared using gloves and apron etc. Some items need particular attention and we should have a safe and portable water supply. So, that because the water is the best carrier of the microorganisms which make you ill health. Then selection of wholesome ingredients, when you select vegetables and uh, grains and all, you select the best material so that it stays for a little longer time before you cook and there is no infestation or uh, infection in the uh, foods that you consume. Then after you get uh, good water and um, good vegetables and grains, it is not enough that you purchase very good items without handling them properly. So, hygienic handling also is very important. Now, water is the one ingredient which is essential for any preparation. So, it is an essential part in the food preparation and we use water to wash our hands and wash the vegetables and the grains before cooking. So, for that before cooking you have to clean the containers and for that also water is used. Then to make the beverages water is used and it should therefore, water we select should be free from pathogenic bacteria. That means, it should be a pure water and that is called a portable water. Now, portable water which is free from pathogenic organisms, it should not have any harmful bacteria because water is carrier for so many water borne infections. So, it should be free from bacteria and it should not contain uh, much of dissolved salts and minerals though water definitely contains some salts and minerals, but the quantity should not be too much high and special treatment should be given to remove the impurities, so that it is safe for portable purposes. Portable purposes is for drinking and cooking. Then sources of contamination of water, you have through seepage of sewage, when the water pipeline and the sewage pipeline go together, there is a chance of sewage seepage into the water. Then sewage as we know, it is a great carrier of the pathogenic bacteria because it comes through so many ways like the it comes through the waste of waste uh, wastage that is released from the human beings from the animals and from the washing of uh, various uh, things like from starting from clothes to animals to human beings. So, many healthy persons may be the carriers you will not know who is a carrier of disease and when they go and uh, take bath in the water and uh, excrete in the water these organisms may be entering into the water. Then when you see near the shallow wells and ponds, many people uh, do their excretion. So, this excretion when the human excreta is deposited near the ponds and the wells, this uh, slowly this gets seeped into the rivers or ponds and gets contaminated. Then Hutman dwelling is another area where there is um, lot of contamination of water because of uh, improper sanitary measures they follow and very low water facilities. They do not have water facilities. So, they get water from somewhere and uh, use the water outside their homes which causes a lot of health hazard. Then there is no facility for drainage and uh, used water. Then there is the sewage stands around the houses and this encourages the breeding of mosquitoes and flies. And the flies, they move from one place to the other and they may move from the excreta to the water or on the food and they get contaminated um, very easily. So, what you can do about the pesticide residue? Now, today what uh, the vegetables that are grown are highly containing the pesticides 
So, after giving the pesticide, uh, they have to keep it for a period of time, so that the pesticide residue does not remain in the vegetable. But the farmer harvests is so fast that the residue remains on the vegetables. So, this can see cause a very serious problem in the diet. So, you have to take precautions to remove the pesticides. So, thoroughly rinse and scrub fruits and vegetables, so that whatever the um, dust that is remaining on the fruits and vegetables is removed. Then remove outer leaves of leafy vegetables like cabbage or you peel the vegetables and trim the fat from meat, poultry and throw back the big fish. Because when these fish are given so many of the insecticides and uh, the uh, things that uh, remove the harmful things from the uh, fish they grow very big. So, throw back the big fish. Then with regard to food, you have to wash the vegetables and fruits thoroughly before using and all the exposed foods must be washed with clean water. When you go to the market, you see the food entire uh, fruits and vegetables are exposed and there is lot of dust and pollution around it. So, before cooking the food should be washed and clean and uh, very good water should be used for washing. For example, if you see fruits like guava, they are sold on the carts and it is open and we cannot purchase and eat it immediately. So, before eating these should be washed thoroughly. Then out the skin of plant material, they contain lots of microorganisms. So, again washing is very important to remove these microorganisms. Then when it is with the animal foods, the skin, hair, feathers and intestines of the animals, again these contain a lot of microorganisms. So, you remove the hair, whatever the skin is there, the intestinal part, everything is removed and only the muscle part and bone part is used for preparation. Now, after taking so much of care for taking uh, cleaning the food and vegetables, the food handling is another important aspect of hygiene and sanitation. So, food comes into contact with human hands during harvesting, storage, preparation and serving. All these parts are sometimes serving also is done with hand. So, food handlers should be very much free from communicable disease. What is a communicable disease? A disease which spreads from one individual to another individual very easily either by contact or uh, through inhaling the air is called a communicable disease. So, they should be free from the communicable disease. Then human hair, nasal drainage and skin also can be a source of microorganism. That is why they should have a head cap, then they should have gloves and a mouth mask. So, that all these three are prevented from I mean uh, the spoiling the food or contaminating the food with infectious uh, organisms. Then persons who are handling the food must before serving the food or handling the food, they must thoroughly wash the hand with soap. It is not only with water, but along with soap they should wash very nicely and refrain from touching the hair or wiping nose when the preparation is going on. So, because the food sanitation is the way of life. If you prepare the food in a very hygienic and sanitized way, the food will not cause any poisoning or infection in an individual. Then a number of gastrointestinal disorders are contaminated through water or food. So, all the water bone infection and food bone infections are generally carried through the water. So, uh, things like uh, I mean uh, in illness like typhoid etcetera are also carried by water and cholera, diarrhea, the simple cold cough everything is con contaminated through the food and water. Now, spread of disease through fecal contamination is if the person is a diseased person, he will go and excrete the feces in a field which it, this can be flown with water into the stream of water or through the hands if the person does not wash the hands properly, it can be spread through the wands. He will come and again touch the food, therefore, the food can be contaminated. Then flies, they can uh, reach the feces and then again come and touch the food where it can contaminate and the soil, soil where he excretes when again when the crop is grown there, the bacteria also grows into the uh, soil. 
then these are the various ways how the food is contaminated and these organisms enter into a new victim and make him a sick person. That is how the communicable diseases are spread. Now, food contamination may be contaminated if water is not portable, if the soil is not removed and the utensils are not cleaned properly and you have unhygienic habits like without washing hands, you touch the food, you just uh, go and sneeze on the food, cough on the food and uh, clean your nose before while preparing the food. Then in all these cases you have communicable diseases and a person who is having communicable diseases will definitely spread the disease to the others. Now, the equipment, so all the equipment coming in contact with the food should be kept clean like the jars of the mixie, the blenders, the grinders, the knives like etcetera should be very clean. So, they should be scrubbed cleaned with the detergent and water and finally, they should be rinsed with portable water and the equipment which can be dipped into hot water can just be dipped into uh, water of 80 degrees centigrade at least for 30 seconds or more and removed so that whatever food material is remaining will be clean. Then you can remove the parts of the blenders everything can be separated and see that there is no food material remaining in the jar and it is perfectly clean to be used for the next time. Then use separate cutting boards when you cut meat and vegetables. The same cutting board cannot be used because meat has lot of microorganisms which can spread into the vegetables. Then prepare raw foods in separate area from fresh and ready to eat foods. Then clean and sanitize the equipment that is used. The work surface should be cleaned after the entire cooking part is over because when the food is remaining there, the bacteria are, are attacked, attracted to that place and increase in number. And the utensils all should be cleaned immediately after preparing the dish. Then use specific containers for various foods and make sure that cloth and paper towel is used for wiping the spills and uh, the cloth that is used for wiping the spill is again cleaned and used and not used repeatedly so that it carries so many microorganisms. And control of insects and rodents is very important. So, because common insects that are contaminating foods you have so many things running around in homes like rats, mice, bandicoots they carry so much of infections in their hair, in their um, saliva, in the, with along with their legs and all. And the house fly which moves from this place to the, that place and contaminates food. And cockroaches are one more uh, very bad insects which will move on the food and on everything and contaminate the foods. And there are many small insects which will also help in the uh, spoilage of food. So, how to prevent and uh, the entry of uh, these insects. So, you put the prepared food in um, cupboards where there is a wire meshing, so that the insects rats and mice cannot enter into the cupboards and you put the food that is prepared on with a cover, it is it should not be left open. Then filling the cracks, fissures on the wall and flooring, so that small insects and ants and cockroaches do not uh, crop up and covering the drains holes and with a wire gauze, so that from the drainage the cockroaches do not enter into the kitchen. Then spraying or dusting the house with a mild pesticide which will neither affect the children nor at the same time it will stop the insects from entering into the house. Then sometimes fumigation also may be resolved in, in large godowns where large quantities of foods are uh, stored and factories so that it destroys the insects and rodents. All the food factories should be fumigated once in a while to clear the insects and rodents. Then insecticides since they are poisonous, they must be used in small amounts and only when they are needed. Now, good sanitation before preparation, you should tie the hair, wash the hands properly, wash all the fruits and vegetables and the cereals and whatever material that is to be cooked thoroughly before uh, cooking. 
then use clean vessels and equipment then before cooking also they should be washed again then cooked food should be covered properly using proper lids and leftover food should be stored in the refrigerator and reheated just before use if you follow all these conditions then the food remains hygienic and it is very good for individuals who are eating the food therefore food sanitation and hygiene should be maintained very well so that the family is healthy and having a good food there is no spread of communicable diseases and there is no extra uh, expenditure on medical costs because of eating bad food thank you